I'm going to talk about trends in relational databases. Uh, this is very important for you to know because informational. Uh, lot of relational databases store data in row formats. You had tables, data got stored one row at a time. But let's say you have to count, you have to count the or sum the number of orders. The sum the orders or sum the order amount. So that is in one column. But relational databases were built in such a way in order to get this amount you are reading row by row, row by row. We call it slow by slow, slow by slow. Now this in the current trend is to transform this data in columnar format. What we call in-memory databases. I am biased. I won't call HANA a good database, but you know, my answer. No, no, HANA is of course a very good system. But if you ask me uh, of in-memory databases, um, my personal choice of very good in-memory is MemSQL. MemSQL is a very good in-memory database that uh, you know, is doing very good in the market. VoltDB is also good, but commercially, um, MemSQL is a bigger success. Uh, if, you are, if you are looking for a good commercial database that works with both structured and unstructured data, uh, what, is, what do you think is a good database that? SNGs. Both? Huh? Redis. Redis is in memory. Redis is more of a cache than a database. Uh, and database that is doing very good commercially uh, in the, actually not, Cassandra's data summit creates more revenue for than their, uh, you know, the actual license sales because they, um, again, I'll, I'll digress. You have a business of burger and fries. Okay, in the, every business is a business of burger and fries. Cassandra decided to give the burger for free and the f they are charging for the fries. It is not going to make them a lot of money. And some companies are coming and charging you for the ketchup. So they to even, you know. So um, the, there's a database coming up called Snowflake. Snowflake.net is doing very good. Uh, my friend uh, is a founder out in a company called Yugabytes. Yugabytes is also doing, I mean, that technology is pretty good. So you will, they have just landed Series A funding. So Yuga, Y-U-G-A. Snowflake is a database that is built into, into the cloud. They leverage S3 storage in Amazon. So you don't have to have any infrastructure. You can just sign up and start doing analysis on, on, on them. And they have ways to visualize. So you don't have to write Python and SQL. You can take structured and unstructured data together and they have built a query language that can parse JSON just as if you are going to write SQL. So it competes with Aurora? It competes with Redshift, Amazon Redshift. Snowflake. It only runs on AWS. It only runs on I think they are also doing it on Azure, Microsoft Azure. Yes. Are you saying all in-memory databases are columnar databases? No, 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 no. Some of them are still old school. Like our Oracle has an in-memory option. Uh, it's it's the same database. Then times ten is a so there. Uh, but there are. This is the trend that's coming up. You know. Uh, there's too many questions. Yes. Uh, what's the most common columnar database? As I said, now, my opinion, MemSQL is doing very good in this uh, space. Is it, because it is for faster processing. Your analytics queries are much faster because you don't have to wait for you to read the entire table. You are just reading one column. Okay. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to skip this slide. This is more informational, but. I'm going to go to the next slide because this is the trend of NoSQL databases. We have touched on this uh, subject. Um, why NoSQL databases? Because you have to support large number of concurrent users. Large number of concurrent users, tens of thousands. I was asked by a friend who was designing a game for an iPhone app. I said, how many users? Because I come from a relational world. He says, it can be 10 or it can be 10,000 or a 1 million. I'm like, I don't know, you should start with one machine and the relational strategy is to build monolithic structure from one machine to a bigger machine, bigger machine, bigger machines. But in these type of cases, you have a gaming application, 
which will have to support it by a database that you don't know from day one it when we are hit or a miss so you want a scale out architecture scale out architecture means you can add machines and the database automatically expands cassandra is a, an example where you have a, can use a ring like structure deliver highly responsive experiences for globally distributed users this is the uh, this is a very important problem if you are interested in operational side of setting up databases on the infrastructure side there is a book called art of scaling the art of scaling book is very important uh, facebook uh, i was working in a startup and i have friends you know in these companies i said okay let's meet for lunch and i said uh, mm, i want to sell our product robin software to facebook uh, he smiled and he said can you support a cluster of 10000 mysql databases said i my test runs on 10 servers on amazon so 10000 databases globally distributed so somebody gives a like on your status that there is an enormous amount of technology that actually takes that and spreads the information across the geography in order to do that they have taken mysql but they have taken the engine out of the database engine of mysql out and replace it with a database called rocks db if you search with something called my rocks you will find rocks 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 my rocks or rocks db okay facebook facebook has done that so my sequel engine and change replace it with rocks db and they have open source it as well called my rocks yes anyway so these are examples of the use of my sequel databases uh it is sorry no sequel databases and uh you know they have become very popular these days but all of them are trying to build a structured sequel on top of it okay i think of the no sequel databases that we have if you want to focus on one mongo db is a probably the easiest place for you to start because you can download it get started very quickly on your laptop uh how many of you are familiar with a technology called docker docker is basically a containerization technology it's a lightweight virtualization technology if you look at docker downloads to run mysql on a laptop uh, sorry run a nosql database on a laptop mongo db has the highest number of pulls from the docker repository so it is very easily it's just can be, you can get going very easily and the setup is very simple as well it is based on embedded documents which is json but they use something another format called bson binary structured uh, language so 